inside Tennessee. Two lawmakers from the Knox County area with us. John North, quick point. Yeah, Susan's going to jump in, but I just wanted to say to our friends watching at home, I'm not sure Knox County really even quite knows yet what they're supposed to be getting throughout this whole process. They were like, well, we're cautiously optimistic, but and who knows? I, I don't know. The school system saying they don't have a firm number just yeah. yet on the BDP They don't have the change. coins on the table. Yeah. Susan? Well, a couple of the things that passed this year I wanted to ask you about. One was a $500 million bond <laughs> issue for Titan Stadium, and another one was $250 million for infrastructure at Tennessee right. State. Um, would y'all comment on that and tell me what the discussion and uh, yeah, did you support yeah. the bond issue for the Titan Stadium? Mike Glory, I'll start with you. I, I did not support the bond issue for Titan Stadium. Quite frankly, as I said, there were so many things undone. We have a crisis in DCS and we had legislation to, to fund that at the cost of 16 million. And they wouldn't fund that, they couldn't find it, but you can find, find, find 500 in for a stadium and the fact that our teachers will only see 50 to $75 a month raised, but we could find that money for a stadium. I couldn't vote for that much for that stadium in good conscience with all the things that we didn't fund for, for kids statewide. And what about the infrastructure, 250 million for Tennessee State? Infrastructure. Well, that is my understanding. That is, we owe five hundred million to Tennessee State for monies that we haven't given. That is part of it coming back to them that we have owed them for some time. And so, I absolutely believe we should pay our bills. Okay, Dr. Briggs. Uh, yes, I did vote. It was a. I will admit, it was a hard vote uh, with the stadium. And really all that, that we're doing, and remember, this isn't money spent that we're going to write a check and give them. This is issuing a bond to cover it. Uh, and we really aren't building the stadium or contributing to the stadium, but we're going to have it so you can put a roof over the stadium. And uh, the explanation that was given to us is that this will allow another 15 major events to occur into the stadium rather than just playing football there. Uh, there's a good chance that we'll have a Super Bowl that will come into the state of Tennessee. A Super Bowl brings in almost a half a billion, uh, 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 I mean, uh, it brings in almost a half a billion dollars of revenue into the city and into the state if we do get a Super Bowl. So it is more than a football stadium. It's really an event stadium, but you have to put the roof on it. And the state of Tennessee's contribution through a bond uh, is uh, is to put the roof on the stadium. Otherwise, it wouldn't have had a roof. Uh, getting back to Tennessee State University, I was the co-chairman on the land grant university uh, uh, committee and uh, task force that worked on this for almost two years. And uh, Representative Johnson is correct, is that uh, if you look back, we can only go back about to the 1950s when we asked the uh, Physical Review Committee to try to figure out uh, how much underfunded that uh, Tennessee State University was compared to the University of Tennessee. Uh, of course, we only have uh, you know two land-grant universities in the state. Uh, the University of Tennessee became land-grant university in 1862, uh, and then for the black colleges uh, in the South uh, in 1890, then Tennessee State uh, became a land-grant university. And there, the, uh, the state legislature always matched the funds so you could draw down the federal land grant funds. Uh, they've always done that for years. And actually the University of Tennessee was overfunded beyond what was required, whereas Tennessee State University was underfunded. And uh, this $250 million uh, is, a, uh, is a makeup from that. And we worked very closely uh, with the administration of, uh, at Tennessee State University and uh, Representative Harold Love Jr. was the uh, House co-chairman on that committee with me. Thanks. Folks, let me shift topics on something I know slightly more about, I suppose, but I want to talk about the, quote, criminal justice reform bills that came through. Uh, I, I have to say that I'm, I'm very disappointed on a lot of fronts. And, and Richard, I want to begin with you as, as a Republican here today. Uh, the governor would not sign the truth and sentencing bill, meaning it effectively becomes law after he refuses, I think it's 10 days. And what that said is, is, is certain crimes, such as murder, uh, rape, uh, different kinds of very serious offenses, 
they could not receive any credits for good behavior, for work, for vocational programs, for rehabilitation, rehabilitative type programs. I'm curious, uh, if the governor uh, had vetoed it, do you think this would have been one of those occasions where the state, knowing that it's just a straight 50% override, would have overridden the governor's veto? Or, or do you think they would have paid attention and maybe tabled that for another year? I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, as you know, Don, I'm the chairman of the state and local government committee, so we oversee all of uh, corrections and under the previous commissioner, uh, Tony Parker, we had added a lot of services in our prisons. They almost look as far as rehabilitation and skills training. Uh, the, the three things that prisoners uh, when they've served their time in a release that lead to recidivism is a lack of a job, a lack of housing, a lack of transportation. And now we've taken away and all incentives, though, for, uh, for those folks to participate in any of those programs when they get out. I, I've completely lost the sound. I'm sorry. That's right. Can you hear me, Dr. Briggs? Yes, I hear you. Uh, okay. Just to restate what Don said, he said, uh, and with this new law, we've taken away those incentives. Uh, do you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, yes, I do. And I will have to say, I did not support the law and I did not vote for the law. Uh, Governor Lee and I have worked very closely on this. If you go out to the Morgan State Penitentiary, which is the closest one to us, it really looks like a Tennessee College of Applied Technology uh, with uh, barbed wire around it with fences. And uh, we've made a lot of progress. There's a thing called the Texas Plan. I won't go into details, but uh, this was supported by Governor Rick Perry, Newt Gingrich, Governor Huckabee, Governor Haslam, and other conservative Republican governors. The state of Texas was able to close eight adult prisons. They have four more adult prisons scheduled for closure, and they were going to cut their corrections budget by $4 billion and reduce their recidivism rate from about 75% to about 25% while crime went down 30%. So uh, I understand exactly the concerns, whether if the governor would have vetoed it, it would have, uh, uh, the, the vote would have remained the same, I don't know. But talking to some of my colleagues who did vote for it, particularly those that were on the committee that I chair, uh, I think uh, with, a, with some lobbying on the governor's part, uh, there was a possibility that uh, uh, that veto could have been upheld. Gloria, your quick take, we have about 30 seconds before we have to break. Absolutely. We took so many steps backwards in criminal justice reform this time. That bill, we also repealed any um, probation reform that we had last time. And this, the truth in sentencing, they did that back in the 90s. We have plenty of data to show that it didn't work. Everybody's come out of that. Why are we going to it now when we have the research that says it's not successful? It actually makes our communities more dangerous because people don't take these opportunities to do the programs because they're not incentivized to do so. It had the support of the speaker and the lieutenant governor. We're going to be back on Inside Tennessee with more from our local lawmakers right after this.